Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Beth Berenger, and I'm the Director of Education Programs for Essex Heritage. We're so delighted that you're here with us for this event, Community of Changemakers. We're going to be exploring the history of black activism in Essex County this morning. If you're not familiar with our organization, Essex Heritage, I'll just give you a brief snapshot. Um, all of Essex County is a federally designated heritage area. And what that means is that we have some really wonderful and unique historic and cultural and natural resource-based organizations and sites here. <clears throat> so much so that the <clears throat> federal government decided to designate us as a heritage area. And Essex Heritage is the nonprofit that helps to manage that heritage area. We try to connect people with the really complex and rich heritage that we have here. Um, and we are so happy today to be focusing on black heritage and black history. Um, not only history, but also thinking ahead to what's going on today and what's going to be happening in the future. Um, so what you'll see as we look through the agenda today, we have a focus on the history, but also a focus on activists who are making a difference right now and young people who are going to be leading us into the future as well. Um, and so uh, before we get a little further though, um, on behalf of Essex Heritage, I'd like to offer this land acknowledgement um, that our organization has been working on in co uh, con consultation with local indigenous communities. Okay, so if you'll bear with me. <laughs> the Essex National Heritage Area encompasses land on which indigenous communities have thrived for millennia. The Pawtucket Band of Massachusetts Tribe inhabited the land that is now known as Essex County. Indigenous peoples should not be relegated to history. They are still here and are part of our shared story. As we move towards an equitable future, we will celebrate and continue to honor the heritage of the indigenous communities that have called this region home for generations. Thank you. And so the goal is really for this symposium um, is for us to work together and collaborate with one another to better understand um, both, as I was mentioning, the history of activism, but also moving us forward into the future. So I'd like to just ask, how many of us are in here, our museum professionals? Can you just raise your hand? It's wonderful. And so, you know, you guys are on the front lines helping us disseminate these stories. How many of us are educators? <clears throat> Ooh, a lot. Wonderful. And so again, very, very special members of our community who are helping us to better understand these stories and to share them <clears throat> with young people. So, so important. How many of us consider ourselves to be activists? A lot of us do. Wonderful. And so <clears throat> we want to bring together people from a lot of different backgrounds, from a lot of different, different experiences to be together in this journey today. Um, <clears throat> we also wanted to mention that this um, program is really building on a guide that was put together, um, you know, I think it was published about a year ago or more, trying to examine what was in our archives um, existing in our museums um, in terms of black experience. And this was something that National Park Service put together. So I know we have some, who are, who are our National Park Service friends today? <laughs> Very nice, thank you. <laughs> was put together also with two principal investigators, Dr. Liz Duclo-Arcello and Dr. Cabrera Baumgartner, both of whom will be with us later today. Um, so just wanted to acknowledge that work and thank you for that work. We're trying to build on that work. Also wanted to mention that Essex Heritage has done some professional development for teachers around some of this um, history um, in a series we call Teaching Hidden History. So that's something we'll be mentioning. Um, as we were coming together to do this work, we knew we wanted to do more. And really, that's um, why we're here today, to come together in person and try to connect around this history. Um, so let's walk through the agenda. If you take a look, we're going to be spending most of our time in this room, the Petrovsky room. <coughs> this is where we'll have the full <coughs> group sessions. But we will also be using um, some spaces next door at what's called Berlin School of Business. You might have walked by it on your way from the parking lot. Um, and that's really only going to be for breakout sessions. Um, 
We do have lunch that will be served downstairs. Um, did you see the cafeteria on your way in? <laughs> so that's where you'll be purchasing lunch today. Um, and then in the afternoon, we have one more um, panel, and then we have a breakout. Um, that's the only other time that you might be leaving this space. Um, and so for the most part, we'll be here at Petrosky. Um, there are also bathrooms that are looking out on this floor and also the first floor. Does anyone have any questions about the agenda or where we'll be? All right. We are also filming this event. Okay. So um, not all of it, you know, we probably can't capture the breakouts, but for you know, the, the full group sessions, we're, we're trying to capture those. Um, so we know some folks are going to be here today in person, so we're hoping to make that available to people who can join us. And right now, I'd like to um, invite my colleague, Sherry Grishin, to come forward. She's going to um, do a series of thank yous, because there are so many people to thank. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sherry Grishin. I'm the Director of Operations at Essex Heritage. And this would not be possible without the help of so many individuals and organizations who have made it possible. So we're going to mention a few here. Um, first of all, we would like to thank our funder, um, this symposium would not be happening without a generous African-American civil rights grant that we received from the National Park Service. And um, we would like to thank Dr. Emily Murphy, Dr. Cabrera Baumgartner, and Dr. Elizabeth Ducla Arcello for their work on the African-Americans in Essex County Annotated Guide, which was really the catalyst for that grant proposal and also for the symposium. We want to thank the Salem State History Department, Andrew Darian, for all their help in partnering with us, the IT Department for setting all the tech up, we want to thank Zobeda Shafi um, Valdez in the back there. She's our graduate student from Northeastern University and has been amazing gathering all the materials, putting everything online, whatever we need last minute. So thank you, Zobeda. She's even going to pitch in and do a hands-on history uh, session for us. So she's amazing. Thank you to Beth Bauer, Essex Heritage Trustee, for helping us in the early planning stages. Uh, we want to thank all of our expert facilitators and contributors today. There are too many to mention, but on your agenda, there's a QR code that would send you to our website. Uh, there's a link to bios for each of them, so please check it out. It's an amazing group of experts. And thank you to our Essex Heritage staff, many of whom are helping today, but especially Beth Berenger. She has really gone above and beyond pulling us together. Many months working tirelessly, so you've done such an amazing job. Um, we are thankful that all of you are choosing to spend your Saturday here with us, um, learning from a really amazing group of experts and educators, and we look forward to a really inspiring and informative day. And with that, I am going to introduce another Essex Heritage trustee and the Vice President of Student Success at Salem State University, Dr. Nate Bryant. Thank you, so Beth said I have an hour to uh, get some questions, so fasten your seatbelts. No, uh, uh, welcome to Salem State University. I am really, really proud to be uh, uh, partnering with uh, Essex National Heritage. They do a wonderful job. And you know, the timing of this event is perfect because if you look at states like Florida and Texas, um, there is an attempt to kind of silence the contributions and stories of black and brown people. So in symposiums like this, that are critical to making sure we don't remain, or we don't, we are not silenced, and so we continue to tell our story. So I really appreciate that. I'm actually just here looking forward to the conversations and learning something new. I'll tell you, I'm particularly interested in the youth panel. Um, I think it was George Bernard Shaw who said, "Youth is wasted on the young." He was not talking about these folks. I'm really yeah. looking forward to what they have to do. And again, just uh, sit back, relax. I look forward to a wonderful symposium. We are so glad you're using Salem State as the venue, and we look forward to further partnerships. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nate. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start off with our first session. As you walked in, and you were greeted by the Essex Heritage staff, you've got an agenda. Did they give you a number on your agenda? Oh my gosh. Yay. <laughs> okay. So that number is important, and hopefully you filmed onto your agenda. If you did, it's perfectly fine. We will find you a place to go. But the numbers are corresponding with a particular breakout that you are going to attend right now. Um, and so I would like to invite our wonderful facilitators for our next session, which is called Hands-On History. 
this is where we will be diving into some of the um, just <clears throat> really inspiring stories of local people in Essex County who have been change makers in our region. Um, and so we'll get a chance to be in small groups to look at some documents, to talk with each other, and to consult with these uh, facilitators about some of these change makers. So I'd like to invite those facilitators to come forward. They're going to give us their names and if they have an organization they're affiliated with, and just a brief snapshot of what they'll be talking about. Um, and fear not, if there is someone here that you wish you could learn more from, but you aren't in their group, it's okay, because maybe you'll see them at lunch. And also, we are going to be putting on our website um, some of the contacts and documents and website links and so forth that can lead you to more information about all of the wonderful work that they have done with their organizations. So why don't we bring forward the hands-on history facilitators and we have numbered them, <clears throat> so come on up. <clears throat> have Ed Bell, number one. Hello, my name is Ed Bell. I'll be uh, giving a really quick overview of looking at, uh, at, at text that you can find pretty much quite easily online and how to look at them maybe with a critical eye. And then, uh, I hope, as we have time, uh, look at some primary records, which are documents related to a freedom suit brought by Nancy Parker, who lived in Hamburg in 1771. Hi, my name is Jean Pickering, and um, in our session, we'll be talking about a particular freedom suit filed by a man who was named Caesar, and he lived in Andover, and uh, he was, this is a story, I think, of an ordinary and I'm not sure what to call him, but in an ordinary enslaved man who really worked hard and fought hard for his freedom and was able to win it against some pretty large odds. I'm Lucy Keller. I'm with Historic Beverly, and I'm going to be um, showing, sharing some primary sources about um, Juno Larcom, who is uh, extremely well documented for that era um, woman, enslaved woman. Um, who claimed her freedom at the death of her enslaver. Um, and we are, and just yesterday I found another piece of her story that I was able to add to it. <laughs> so, I mean, we already had the information, but we found the confirmation. So, <laughs> so that was cool. Um, but, and then, uh, let me see what else, I guess that's it. I'm Nora Hi, my name is Nora Howard, and I'm a park ranger at Salem Maritime National Historic Site uh, with education programs. And in my group, we're going to be examining some 18th century newspaper advertisements announcing the self-emancipation of enslaved people. Uh, and we're going to be um, talking about uh, their place in the revolutionary era uh, and the, the meanings of freedom within that era. Hi, number five is Lou May. I am with the Marwed Racial Justice Team, uh, and I'm here with my good partner, Lauren McCormick of Marblehead Museum. We each are going to be covering a fascinating woman, Lucretia Brown, who began life in the 1770s and lived until the 1850s. And what a life that woman had. Uh, always uh, free, not enslaved, and made the most of her circumstances. Uh, so, people who will learn about Lucretia, you're in for a treat. And obviously, at lunch, as Bill said, we can talk about her email. Lou said it all for me, so I'll yeah. sit on the table here. Uh, I'm Lou Hi, good morning everybody. Uh, Donika Thurston, she, her, her pronouns. Um, I'm going to be in Birch Holin 137, group number seven, so we can meet in the hallway and I will direct you there because I've already been there. Uh, but my session, uh, I'm going to be sharing some examples of text from our Black History exhibit and the primary sources that we use to generate that text. I have a museum education public programs background, so you all will get to look at text and try to generate your own labels and generate your own stories about these black activists in our community. 
So come on over. Uh, hi, I'm Sobeta Shafi. Um, I will be also in Berlin, um, and we are coming really into the modern era. I have uh, a lot of different documents about student activism and black student organizing as here in Salem State uh, from the 1970s. So I'm really excited to share those stories. Um, and please, yes, also meet me in the hallway. <laughs> anyone have a question about um, where they're going if we look up here and I think it's also on the agenda you should yeah. see if you get to stay here or if you're going to move 